Murder him. Okay. What the f are you all serious? Murder him. Murder him. Fucking asshole. Over the years, there has been an endless genre of games I've enjoyed from competitive shooters like Valorant to hack and slash titles such as Devil May Cry. But my favorites have always been games set in old fantasy worlds like Dungeons and Dragons. This is where this little gem being worked on by the devs over at Iron Mace comes into play, Dark and Darker, a fantasy dungeon crawler game that is like an extraction shooter such as Tarkov, but instead, you slap swords, daggers, and more into players' hands. This is incredibly cool to me, but I suppose I should actually explain what the gameplay is really all about. When you first jump into Dark and Darker, you will have six classes to choose from. This includes tankish barbarians who can smash through doors, to wizards that can buff and deal damage with their variety of spells. Once you have found your class of choice, it's time to dive into the systems of the game. When sitting at the tavern, which is like the main hub area, you have at first glance an overwhelming set of options. You have a class tab where you can change perks and abilities for your class. This includes two equipable cooldown abilities you can use in-game, then up to four passive abilities that you can mix and match as well based on your level. There also appears to be a perk tree, but the game is in early testing phases still, so I should quickly mention there is a lot of missing from the systems in the game. This may make it hard to judge how good all of these are since it's incomplete as it stands. Now moving on over to the dungeon tab. This is where you choose what kind of dungeon you wish to enter for a match. This includes the Forgotten Castle, High Roller, and Goblin Caves. Now the Forgotten Castle has a total of 18 players that enter into it, and these players can be in teams of up to 3. High Roller is the exact same as the Forgotten Castle, but instead you have to pay a fee to enter the dungeon, and all the enemies in loot are stronger and better. Then the Goblin Caves are for solo players only, no teams, and this brings in 9 total players. Now what your objective basically is, is for you or your team to go into the dungeon, find loot in various ways that range from killing enemies, opening chests, smashing jars, and so on, and escape. It sounds simple, and it kind of is, but at the same time it's not. The dungeons are filled with endless things trying to kill you. You have traps from floor spikes to swinging axes ready to take you out, mimics that pretend to be a chest ready to eat you, which I should also say I love the mimic designs. I didn't think I could like a design more than the Dark Souls mimics, but Dark and Darker takes it for me. Now you also have skeletons, zombies, goblins, and so much more, like these little spiders that drive me crazy because they endlessly respawn unless you destroy these little jars they come out of. You even have boss-like monsters that can drop some really good loot, but are extremely hard to kill. Then just like a battle royale, you have a circle of darkness that encloses on the players that does damage over time, so you need to keep moving. But just remember, even after avoiding all of that, you still have other players to worry about that may try to kill you so they can take whatever loot you found for themselves. And because of how claustrophobic the maps are designed, and the ability to like turn off torches to make these areas extremely dark, this can create some very intense moments when you're trying to escape towards the end, as you're dodging players and enemies, especially when you have some high tier gear you don't want to lose. But if fighting isn't your style, there is proximity voice chat in game, so if you beg enough and maybe bargain, other players just might let you go if you're lucky, or they might just stab you in the back, which is something I would never do. I got it. No, let's be friends. Oh shit. So once you have actually survived everything, you escape through these portals, which include blue portals that lead you back to the tavern and red portals, which takes you down to a deeper section of the dungeon filled with even better loot and stronger monsters. And I really like the design of this area because it's like covered in blood, like from the ceiling to the floor, which I think is cool. Now, once you are all said and done with your looting and return to the tavern, you have a nice stash box to store that wonderful loot you collected. But like any other game with loot, you will have items you don't like, so you can either go to the merchant tab to sell what you don't want, also I should know you can buy various gear and items from the different merchants as well, like potions that restore health, enchanted weapons with bonus effects, or trading in silver for more gold. Optionally though, if you don't want to sell through the merchants tab, 
like if you have a really powerful weapon or too many invisible potions that your barbarian has no need for because you like to go fast and smash, there's a trading tab where you can trade and sell items with other players. Then right by that tab is a gathering hall that makes it easy to find players to make teams for going into dungeons. Then you have the Customize and Shop tabs. Obviously the Customize tab is self-explanatory. You can use skins to change the looks of your characters and items. Now the Shop tab, on the other hand, might not necessarily be. So in the Shop, you have this currency you can use to buy various skins and emotes. You earn this currency only if you successfully escape a dungeon, and how much you get is based on how many enemies you killed and every other action and manageable you do in a dungeon before you escape. I'm fine with this. I wouldn't call myself the best player, but I really felt like I earned this currency at a reasonable pace, and if the currency in the shop becomes a purchasable item, which I assume will probably be a thing, as long as it stays earnable to this extent, I'm perfectly fine with that, and if the uh, prices of the items don't get too out of hand. Okay, with all of that said, I want to say I could see Dark and Darker not being for everyone. The combat is very slow and at times tedious when you're first starting out, but it's incredibly skillful with how the devs have designed the hitboxes. Like the tip of your sword will do more damage than if you're standing up next to the player and slamming your hilt into them, and you even do damage based on where you are actually attacking a player on the body. Then as you finally get geared up, the game really opens up as you actually start standing a better chance against other players and even enemies that go from taking 5 plus hits as something like a rogue to 3 or less or even potentially taking them out in one shot. Then the way you can outplay players, like when I got this guy to open up a portal just for me to steal it from him, or even when I was hiding up in these rafters and throwing throwing knives at like the head of this wizard and then hiding with invisibility was just hilarious to me. I see a lot of potential with this game, not only for like outplayability, but even for just straight up content. Because there really isn't that hardcore competitive fantasy type game for the players that want it, and this can fill that void. Definitely when you consider they have leaderboards for players that show off their accomplishment based on how they perform in high roller dungeons, which gives that extra incentive to actually be better at the game in a meaningful way. Not to mention the game just in general felt incredibly smooth to play performance wise, and I didn't have a single crash while playing it. But even so, it still has a lot of work to do, like it shouldn't be possible for a level 1 player who only has access to one passive perk to be in a match with a fully kitted level 20 player that has access to 4 passives unless, you know, obviously you're in a team or something. These issues though will be solved in time hopefully, and I'm really looking forward to the day Dark and Darker fully releases so I can re review it more in depth to see if it really does succeed in feeling that hardcore skilled PvP fantasy experience. Until then though, I'll keep being a very toxic rogue player and backstabbing everyone I possibly can and stealing their loot. Thanks for watching everyone.